Hello, welcome back to Clarity Design. We're going to have a look at uh, how we can do some basic block building today um, to build some shapes up and to make some more complex models. Uh, we're going to have some, a look at some basic functions which you can then adapt the skills of and uh, apply as you need uh, creatively in your own situation. So let's have a quick look. Um, firstly, uh, we haven't been introduced to the shelf up here. Now the shelves allow you to select different kinds of modeling materials and different options. Uh, the one that you want to be on today is polygons. Surfaces are NURB surfaces, non-uniform rational beast blinds, and you don't want to be using those today. Um, all will become clear later on as you get better uh, at modeling in Maya. Um, but today we'll just focus on polygons. Um, you also probably want to have open this outliner so you can see what's going on with your objects. So this is the third view down at the side on the left hand side. Uh, you can switch it back to full screen and off to the outliner and uh, perspective view. And you also want to have the channel box open. If you can't see that, you've got this uh, toggle box here. You can have the attribute editor, the channel box open, uh, and this is really what you want to have open when you start modeling. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, draw a square. So pressing Alt, I will uh, rotate around and uh, pan across so that I've got a really good view um, of my scene ready to go and I'll draw a uh, cuboid onto the surface you'll notice that this um, so the second click allows me to do the height uh, and I let go and that's drawn my uh, cuboid now if uh, you'll notice that shaded view so uh, if you want to go back to wireframe oh excuse me that was three not four so let's just go through those numbers uh, one is a standard view number two is uh, a um, smooth view with the original polygon and uh, number three is the smooth view without uh, the polygon mesh on the outside um, so go back to one there and then number four is uh, a wireframe view number five is your shaded view number six uh, adds uh, some uh, texture support um, so with texture maps and number seven does it with lights and you can see we have only default lights in the scene at the moment so it doesn't create a lighting map for us so we'll go back to five at the moment um, and it says there you can see press four if you want my frame view we don't we want five so we can see shaded view so there's my first block now it's close to the center of the scene if I uh, go to the four views here you can see um, that how close it is to the center um, let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole shape um, and how close it is to the center here on the surface. So I want to make this exactly in the center. I could do it just by moving these things about, but um, it's much easier if I go over to the channel menu, just select those uh, inputs for translate X, Y, and Z, and press zero, press enter, and that will center it off. And you put it, notice it puts it halfway through uh, the grid as well. So the grid is inside there. So I'll go back, click on my uh, perspective view, go back to the perspective view, and I'm ready to continue making my shape a bit more complex. Now at the moment, my shape is very simple, just one cube in the scene. Let's go back to this view here. You can see one cube here, um, zeroed off, and here under the inputs, you can see what dimensions it was given when it was made. So if you wanted to make it more accurate, you could click on these, you could make it 23, let's make that 23, um, and that way we can see that it is an exact um, dimension. Okay, right now I suppose the next thing is let's make it a bit more complex. So let's make some steps. So we will um, use the duplicate control. Now you can get to duplicate in the edit menu and there's a couple of different ones here we'll look at. Um, but control D is the shortcut for it and that's what the one I will use. So I'll press control D. Now that has duplicated it. You can see up here I've now got two cubes but they are directly on top of each other. So they are exactly the same as they were before. Now I can move that up and I can then go to the scale tool. Remember I can use my shortcut keys W, E and R or I can go over here and scale it in. So I can scale it down a little bit if I want here um, to play around with that until I'm happy. So I'm actually going to take quite a big step in here and move it up slightly as well making sure that I don't separate the two. Now just to check that that's, uh, that's the case I can just press Alt have a swivel around, check that I'm happy with the position of that. Uh, you can see here that I've still got an X and Y of 0 and 0 meaning it's central in my scene. 
Um, you should always try and build objects when you first start building them around this central point in the scene. It makes it much easier later on if you start trying to mirror things uh, or do something complex. So that's the uh, duplicate. The word of warning is don't use Control V or Control C, Control V. It doesn't work very well. It's much better to use duplicate. Um, here's another reason why you might want to use duplicate. You may have noticed that when we went to edit, we've got duplicate special over here. So duplicate special pops open. If you use the little box next to it, you'll get to a menu. Okay, And that pops open uh, the option for us to build something quite quickly. So you can see here I've got a number. Let's go, let's go 10. So I'm going to put the number of copies I want is 10. And this time I've already set up the scale, so it's 0.95 on the x, y, and z. So it's getting smaller in all three dimensions by 0.95 steps. And I've also set the translation of x, y uh, to 1. So it's x, y, z, always x, y, z, um, all the way across. Every time you see this little diagram, x, y, z. Okay, so that's uh, why it's going to step up a little bit and it's going to get a little bit smaller each time. If we hit apply, we'll see what happens. Okay, lovely. So now I've got this kind of nice buildings kind of starting to come together with these little steps. I haven't had to centralize it. I haven't had to re-manipulate any of these. It's a really very quick way to create that structure. All right. So you can see here that my scene is starting to get a little bit complex. I've got lots of objects. If I press Control G, that puts all of those items into a group, and I could rename that uh, build. That was just clicking on it um, to rename it. So I've got build and I've got all of my building inside there. So that's one solution to being able to grab objects. But the problem is that, oh, I can still select all the bits separately. It's only when I select the group that will select everything. That's quite useful in some ways, but at the moment that's not really what I want. So let's just head back on that, Control Z, to undo all of those selections, get rid of that group. There we are, back to how it was before. Um, instead, I could actually combine these objects together. And up in the menu up here, Mesh, there's a few different options you can play around with. In fact, I'd encourage you to have a play around with all of the tools in here uh, and see if you can work out what they do and how they work. We won't have time to go through them all, but each one of them is going to be useful at different times. But here we've got Combine, Separate and Extract. In this case, we're going to combine them together. We're not going to bother going to the options. we we'll just click Combine and see what happens. So there we go. Each one of these seems to have been put into a group. And that group has been uh, put together into this surface. Well, that's wonderful. So now I can pick up this one surface, move it around, and I can't separate those layers by mistake. So that's brilliant. But the problem is that I've got all this mess here, and I'm pretty happy with my model. I know I'm not going to want to change it. So if I delete some of these, pressing delete, ah, well, they seem to still be linked in history to the object that's been made. Now I can sort that out in two ways. I could keep this and hide it away on a layer. I'll show you that another time. Uh, and just simply duplicate it. So I've got another copy. This one is not linked to the original. Or, let's just delete that. I could get rid of the history of this object. Okay. Now getting rid of the history is going to remove these things here and leave the shape as it is. And to do that, I go Edit, Delete by Type, and Delete History. And you can see that just leaves me with one nicely complex polygon surface that I am ready to carry on modeling with. So I can keep getting more and more complex and building this up. Now we haven't looked at any other shapes or any of the other things that you can play around with, but hopefully you can have fun exploring this for yourself and taking this a step further. Um, I hope that's nice and clear for you, and I will see you again soon.